Luke chapter 7, beginning at verse number 36. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head <clears throat> and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spanked within himself saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner a woman this is that touches him. For she is a saint. That what your Bible say? No, mine say sinner. Maybe y'all got the wrong translation. So let's try that again. This man, being Jesus, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touches him. For she is a sinner. I want to back up. Verse 38 said, and stood at his feet behind him, weeping. And began to wash his feet with tears. And did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. I want to tag this text briefly. I want to talk about real worship. Real worship. It's sad to say that in 2023, many of us who have come from nothing to God have given us something. But we still yet don't understand worship. Real worship cannot be withheld in, but real worship comes from within to without. Simply put, real worship has to be expressed. Amen. Let me drop this on you for free. This word worship comes from an unusual Greek word, proskuneo, where we get our English word W-O-R-T-H. We get our English word worth. From the Greek word proskuneo, which means when we come to worship, you and I come to show God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the triadic union of God, we come to show publicly what he's worth to you. The value of worth. It's different in everybody's heart. Because if you was born with a silver spoon in your mouth, you can't appreciate worship. But when you've had to live from can to can, y'all ain't got to say nothing. When you've had to make it on a little, and see God take a little and give you leftovers. That'll make you worship. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. When you realize that the degree and the pedigree and the PhD and the, uh, the MD of and, and the doctorate, when you realize where you come from, and your forefathers and foremothers and your relatives did not have an opportunity.
opportunity to articulate at a higher learning. But they made it off a of third and fourth grade education. And some of them had more sense than you and I because they understood worship. I wish I had a witness in here. It, it, it didn't take them graduating to understand who woke them up this morning. I wish I had some help. It did not take them having commas behind zeros in your account for them to understand worship. For they knew how to make it on nothing and trust God to give them something. Grandmama would walk around the house and say, bread of heaven. That's when you ain't got none in the cabinets. That's when your bread done expired and you got to eat them two end pieces. I wish I had a witness in here. Bread of heaven. Feed me till I want no more. She be hiding and had that all go starch and we slip behind and get us a piece of it. But she be hiding and singing at the same time, the Lord will make a way somehow. Worship is when you express, not privately, but publicly, what he's worth to you. Now watch this. Jesus understood that some of you is not going to worship. He understood it. That's why he put it in the Bible. He understood that some of you are not going to say amen, not going to stand, not going to clap, not going to say nothing. And the reason some of you can't do it because you're too cute. You got a figure eight. But if you live long enough, that eight will drop to a zero. You ain't got to say nothing. Many of you are worried about what somebody else going to say. Many of you will use the cliche, I'm just not like that. But you are emotional. You ain't got to say nothing. Come here, Denzel. Somebody got emotional right there. All of them with the smile. Hey, where you at? When we come to church, we don't come to show how cute we are. We come to show how hot we are. All right, all right. Uh, Desmond, when we played football on Fridays, we got out at 2 o'clock. And uh, we would go to the National Guard uh, Center. And we first eat pancakes because pancakes and Gatorade will help us to keep us from cramping up in the game. We leave from eating the pancakes and we get on the bus. We go back to the school and they will have a pep rally. The game hadn't started. But they're giving us some pre-preparation. Y'all ain't talking to me. And real worship just don't start when you get to Pleasant Green. Somebody started on Saturday. I wish I had a witness in here. Somebody drove up in the parking lot worshiping your Lord and your God. Real worship cannot be quiet. It cannot be held in. Jesus told us this. Watch what he said. I didn't forget. He said these words. If you are ashamed to own me. He didn't say at home. He said, if you are ashamed to own me before me. And the word men there in the Irish test is neutered, which means men and women. If you are ashamed of me in front of people, when you stand in the judgment line, And the angels start calling the road. Come up. Walk the speed. 
70 some years you never said nothing in my name. Preacher after pastor after preacher after pastor have tried to get you to worship and praise my name, but you have refused. So since you were the shame of me, uh-oh, now I'm ashamed of you. Uh-oh. Can I talk with you? When somebody been good to you, had never dissed you, never dogged you, never ran out on you, never mistreated you, and you going to come to church and go to sleep, and you got a postopedic mattress at your house that vibrates less up and down from top to bottom, talk to me, somebody. Gas too high. For me to come to church and sit and just look. I'm going. Ain't going to take me long to get there today. Watch it. Here it is in the text. In Luke chapter 5, uh, between 5 and 6, when you read it when you get home, you discover in Luke 5 and 6 what's going on in Matthew chapter 11. Biblical correlation. How the Bible correlates itself. In Matthew chapter 11, Luke 5 and 6, the scene has been painted. The Pharisees and Sadducees have rejected Jesus. Jesus preaches a sermon. And he stands up and says, all ye that are heavy laden. Watch it now. You ain't getting no money, so you might as well not get ahead of me. Listen. He said, he said, he said, watch this. All ye that are heavy laden. Come unto me, and I will give you rest. He benedicts the sermon. Now we're in Luke chapter 7. And the Bible said in Luke chapter 7, verse 36, watch this. One of the Pharisees desired that Jesus would come to his house and eat with him. Now, that's, that's perplexing to me. Matter of fact, I could have used a point and said that is the perplexity in the text because perplexity means what's confusing. But I didn't want to use that point. But before I get to that point, I want you to understand what's confusing about this. Because if you just look at it with the natural eye, all you see is somebody getting invited to their house to eat. But if you take your natural glasses off, and put on your spiritual glasses, there's a hidden jewel in the scripture. Watch what the Bible said. The Bible said that one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to come to his house and to eat with him. Now, that's, that's, that's perplexing. That's confusing. Because number one, the Pharisees don't like Jesus. They are a separate group. They did not like Jesus nor his teaching. So if you don't like me, why you want to invite me to your house? And I know you don't like me. See, I'm different from you. If I know you don't like me, if I do come to your house, you don't have a bag tied around my waist. Because every time your back turned, the chicken going in the bag. I wish I had a witness in here. I'm different from people because watch this. If I know you don't like me, I'm not going to dog you out. I'm not going to mistreat you. But we ain't running together. have time to talk about you. I don't have time to mistreat you because you ain't that important to me. Because I don't care if you don't like me or not.
Y'all ain't talking. It's confusing that the Pharisee, and I'm going to show you what's confusing in the text, he desired. In the English, that just means that he wanted him to come. But in the original writing, that's not what it meant. This word desired comes from the Greek word eratile. Eratile means to invite with a hidden purpose. He wanted to invite Jesus over, not just to eat, but to interrogate. So the first point we see is a Pharisee that wants to interrogate. Hmm. He wanted to hang with Jesus so he could get something on Jesus. Be careful who you hang with. My thing is this, uh, 54, almost 55, I'm not sitting with you. I'm not going to hang with you if you ain't got much as I got to lose. When we sit at the table and look at each other, you got to have just as much to lose as I got. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. Because watch this, brothers don't run with eagles. And many folk got a bothered mentality. They can't kill nothing, but they'll wait on something to die. you get that on the way home. Watch this. He invites him over with a hidden agenda. And I thank God for grandmama. How you doing? Somebody say hello. <laughs> oh, thank God for grandmama. But grandmama said these words here. If you bring a bone. You'll take one. Do I have a witness in here? You got to be careful because the closer you get to Jesus, the smaller your circle ought to get. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. Some of you right now have lost some friends. Somebody say ain't got none and don't need them. They ain't riding or dying with me. They ain't my friend. But the closer you get to Jesus, the smaller your circle ought to get. The Pharisee didn't even care for Jesus. But he invites him over just to interrogate not to get educated, but to interrogate Jesus. Are y'all listening to me? Watch this. He goes into the Pharisee's house. One thing I like about Jesus, if you invite him, he'll show up. <laughs> Matter of fact, he went to the devil's house and took his keys. I wish I had some help in here. And keys in the Bible represent authority. And the Bible says when Jesus died, he stepped down in hell and took Satan's keys from him. If you invite him, he'll come. I, I dare you right now to open up your heart and invite him in. Say, Lord, come into my heart. Come into my life. He'll show up. And he'll show out. Showed up at a Red Sea. Showed up by opening it up. Showed up on Calvary. Showed up by dying and getting up. And said all power. Huh. Uh, watch the text. Text says he goes in. He sat down to meet. Watch this. Secondly, real worship. We see this person of interest, P-O-I, person of interest, because the text says, watch this, and behold, behold, it do, look at here. 
Sex says, look at here. And when uh, you see the word behold, it gets your attention because he's trying to show you something. He's making a contrast to a comparison. He's trying to show you something, Emerson. He said, look at him. While Jesus is sitting at the table eating, look at him. Look who show up. The Bible said a woman in the city which was a sinner. Okay, y'all don't understand. And I thought, I thought at least with the Owens, school teacher, educator, Reverend Owens, been all over the state with his mask on. He didn't catch it either. No, you didn't. If you'd have caught it, you'd have stood up. You can't sit there with your leg crossed and catch this. This will make you stand up. The text says that this woman, it's in your Bible, which was a sinner. <laughs> She's still a sinner. But Jesus allowed Luke to write it so that when she come in contact with me, <laughs> she was a sinner. I wish I had a witness. The word sinner comes from the word hamatos, where we get our word hamatia. Hamatia is where we get our English word archery. Archery. When the Bible says in Roman, for all have sinned, hamatia, archery, and come short of the glory of God. So the etymology of the word archery is when you pull back your born arrow and the bull's eye is in front of you. And you aim at the bull's eye and let the arrow go. But it still comes up short. Lord, have mercy. I don't care who you are, where you've lived, what you drive, what you know and you don't know. All of us in here have missed the mark. When you pull back the barn arrow, you can't hit the bullseye. You need somebody else to make up the difference. I wish I had a witness. That's why the songwriter said he made a difference in my life. Because when I came up short, he picked up the arrow and let the Holy Spirit guide it to the bullseye. What I cannot do, he can do. Because all of us comes up short. See, if you'd have got it, you'd have stood up, Reverend. You still ain't got it. Because if some of you would be honest and say, I done come up short, but the Lord made up the difference, you wouldn't be sitting down. This sinner, this lady who done missed the mark, come in. To this Pharisee's house. Now wait a minute. See y'all don't know when to shout. You don't know when to shout. The text says she's a woman in the city. The original language. Brother Brooks. Says she's a night woman. She walked Broadway at night. Turn on pine at half after midnight. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. She's a night woman. Wait a minute. See, they hadn't gotten it there. This night woman who's a prostitute. Watch this. Comes in to the Pharisee's house. Now, it's a small city. All the men now scratching their heads. Y'all going to get it here. They're going to get it, Sister Brooks. She's a night woman. There are no other women at the Pharisee's house. I ain't going to leave it alone. You leave it alone. Listen, 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 people. 
Val, listen. This night lady. Who's been known to wear fishnet stockings. Have been known to wear skirts just long enough to cover the subject. Desmond, she walks in to a house full of men. And Jesus is sitting at the table. They scratching their head. Please don't call out my name. What's she here for? Lord have mercy. Jesus Christ, I don't got full already. Where is the back door? You're going to see it here in a minute. They worried that she's going to expose. She's ner they nervous, JB, because this woman of the nightlife. But wait a minute. When she walks into Jesus' house, so it's Kelly. Brother Kelly Lewis, Brother Lewis, when she walks into Jesus' house, can I talk with you? She doesn't change her clothes. She's not looking like the nightlife. You're going to see it here in a minute. She even got her hair pinned up. All right, here we go. Let's go deep. She gets out of her bed of reputation. Pull off her clothes of de degradation. Walk through a crowd with a bad evaluation. On her way to her joy of salvation. And when they looked at her, she gave them cancellation. I wish I had some help in here. Preach, Shield. Come on, speak. Can I hear you say, Preach, Shield? Come on, Thomas. She get an email and a text message. Jesus is at the Pharisee house down the street. She get up, wash herself off, get mad out of her eye. Get out of her bed of reputation. You're going to get that later. Pull off her clothes of de-degregation. Goes to a house and walk through a crowd with bad evaluation. Because she's on her way to her joy of salvation. And when she gets there, she gives them consolation. I wish I had some help in here. Some help in here. Somebody say, I'm about to lose my mind up in here. Up in here. Because I done had to walk through some crowds where folks didn't like me. Folks don't want to talk about me. But I held my head up high. Weighed at them and said, hope you have a good day. Hey. Hey! Watch. I'm about finished. I'm about through. Here we go. Here we go. Watch this. Watch this. The text said, Watch this. Watch this. This woman, this sinner, sits at the house, came in the house. Watch this. Watch her passion. She brought something. You can't come to worship and don't bring nothing. Lord, how much. She, Sister Brooks, she brings a box of alabaster oil. The word alabaster comes from the Greek word alabastria, which is a city in Egypt called Alabastria, Egypt, where they make marbles out of trees. And the marble holds ointment oil in the marbles and it's very expensive a box of alabaster oil was a year's salary in today's terms uh but brown in today's term brother hayden a box of alabaster oil would cost you about 50 to fifty-four thousand dollars
and you won't bring your dollar. Lord, how much? Y'all ain't got to say nothing. I'm going to still preach. You know I got cataracts. I'm going to take them off in a minute. Y'all going to all look alike. Especially out that third row. Oh, watch this. See, you don't know when to shout. In biblical days, when a girl reached a certain age, the parents, the mother, would give her a box of alabaster oil. So when she met the right man and he kneeled down to propose to her, and when she said yes, she would break the box of ointment and rub his feet to say, yes, you, are, you meant for me. Got him! I wish I had a witness in here. Watch this. So watch this. Even though she's a woman of the night, something happened for her to go that way. Because evidently she came from a good upbringing because her mother gave to her and prepared her for life. Are y'all listening to me? Uh, so watch this. You can come from a mansion and still end up living messy. And then God can take a person that's living in mess and bless them with a mansion. So you have to be careful how you judge a book by its cover. All right, let me say it like this. A friend of mine, friend of mine, Brother Hayden, I'm, I'm about finished. A friend of mine uh, goes to the bookstore to buy a Bible. And uh, he buys a Bible. Don't, don't open it up till he get home. Got home, Emerson, he opened up the Bible. And he noticed that the cover, which said Holy Bible, was upside down. So he got the receipt. Moody. True story. He get, gets the receipt to take the Bible back. Get in his car. Pulls out the garage. Halfway down the road, the Holy Spirit spoke to him. And said, what did you buy the Bible for? The cover of what's in the contents. I wish I had a witness. Somebody in here, your cover may be messed up, but don't drag me by the cover because if you get on the content, you'll find out that there's something hidden on the inside of this messed up cover. Do I have any witness in here can say, please be patient with me? Hey, God is not through. Look at somebody and tell them, don't judge me by my cover. She, she, I'm about finished. I'm about finished, John. Thank you. I'm about finished. Watch this. Watch, 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 watch this thing. She, 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 she comes in. She comes in. Now, I want you to understand something. In those days, they did not have chairs like these. In those biblical days, they sit at their knees to the floor and they would recline on the table with their feet stretched back. All right, watch this. They call it fondue style. That's the style they ate, fondue style. And um, watch the text. She comes in, sister Owen. Everybody looking. She ain't saying nothing. Let them look. She's been looked at before. Y'all get that on the way home. Looking at her wasn't no problem. <laughs> Y'all get that on the way home. Uh, she, she, she don't say nothing. Dad, must she come right behind Jesus. Now, see, somebody don't know when to shout. Because watch this. 
when you know where you come from. You don't want to stand in front of it. You want to stand behind it. Now watch this. Somebody say, why stand behind it? Because grandmama couldn't read and write, but she said he's a mighty good leader. He can't lead you if you're standing in the front. But if you get behind him, Jesus will lead. I wish I had a witness in here. The Lord is my shepherd. She comes behind Jesus. Now watch this. The Bible says uh, in Mark that she had a bottle. Luke does not say it. Mark said, Mark and John said she had a bottle. Watch this. She started to cry. Y'all ain't talking. She don't say nothing. She gets behind Jesus. uh, And starts to cry. Mm. Y'all ain't talking. She starts thinking about where she been. Start thinking about what she had been through. Every other man she done met been asking her for something. But now she meeting somebody she ready to give him something. I wish I had a witness in him. Watch this. Watch this. Such people. Um, Sister Lo, she been on our, our show. Uh, Sister Lo, she's got a daughter. Daughter came to me and she said, Pastor, I need a, I need a good man. I can't, I can't find a good man. I need a good man. And uh, I told her, I said, well, I said, so Trisha, let me tell you something now. I said, you got one and you ain't treating him right. She said, who? I said, Jesus. <laughs> Y'all ain't got to say nothing. Some of you in here right now won't even give Jesus a hand clap or pray. You won't wave your hand. You won't pat your feet. And he's been so good to you. He done look beyond your fault. He done kept you all year, all week, 60, 70 years, 40 years, 30 years, 20 years. And somebody right now won't even jump up and say, thank you, Jesus. She crying. She crying. A.W. Tozer said these words right here. God cannot use you greatly until you've been deeply wounded. I wish I had some help in here. Listen. God cannot use you greatly until you've been deeply wounded. She's crying because she's been wounded. She's crying because she's been hurt. She's crying because of the lifestyle that she's chosen to live. And watch the text. The text says she takes this alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him. Watch this. She cried so much. So the Lord, brother, look, she cried so much that she had enough tears to wash his feet. All these men looking at her. Watch this. And we know she different. Because when she came in, Sister Brooks, she had a hair pinned up. But when she got behind Jesus, she let her hair down. Y'all don't know when to shout. What kind of church we could have on Sunday morning if some people in Pleasant Green would just let your hair down? She let her hair down. And began to wipe his feet with the tears. Watch this. And did wipe them with the hairs of her head. Kissed his feet and anointed them with ointment. 
this night woman in front of all these religious people who got a form of religion but don't know who God really is. Watch the text. Text said, watch this. Watch this. Verse 39, I want you to get this. When the Pharisee, which bid Jesus to come, saw what was going on, he talked within himself and said, this man, Jesus, if he was a preacher, if he was a prophet, if he was a man of God, if he was the son of God, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touches him. For she is a sinner. That lying rascal. How he gonna call her a sinner? What do you think he is? I wish I had some witnesses in here. For she a sinner. Well, what is you? You go. I'm coming. Back, back, morning train. Watch it, Moody. He's talking to himself. But what separates Jesus from you and me? You ain't got to say it out loud for him to hear. It's in, it's in the text. Verse 40 said, Jesus answered and said unto him, Simon, you didn't have to say it out loud. I heard what you said. You can fool folks, but you cannot fool God. He knows what you're going to say before it come out your mouth. He knows your agenda. Even before you write it out. He know your schedule for next week. And you ain't even in next week yet. I wish I had some help in here. He said, Simon, I heard you. Everybody else around here, they didn't hear you. But I'm not like everybody else. I heard you. Listen what he said. Watch the parable that he said. Watch this. Jesus said to him, Simon, I have something to ask you. And he said, Master, underline that word master, and we're going on. Master comes in two words. The word master can be the word epistates, which means ruler and overseer. But master in this particular text comes from the word didaskalos, which means teacher. He said, I don't even look at you. As an overseer and a ruler. But I might and willing. To accept you as a teacher. <laughs> but I'm not willing to accept you. To rule and oversee my life. Lord have mercy. Master. Teacher. What you got to say. Watch the parable. Jesus said that was a certain creditor. Verse 41, which had two debtors. The one owed $500 and the other one owed $50. Y'all going to help me, aren't you? One owed 500 The other owed 50 And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly, watch this, forgave them both. Tell me, Simon, which of them will love him more? The one who was forgiven for 500 or the one that was forgiven for 50? Y'all going to talk with me, aren't you? We talking about worship now. Watch this. Watch this. Simon Allison said, I suppose he to whom he forgave the most. And he said unto him, thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said, Simon, I want to have a talk with you. Simon, I'm not trying to disrespect your home. I'm not trying to talk against you in your own house. But Simon, I want to talk with you. 
It's in your Bible. He said, Simon, this woman, I entered in your house. You didn't give me no water for my feet. But she washed my feet with tears. So you don't know when to shout. In the Middle East, because they didn't wear shoes like we wear today. They wore sandals. And sometimes they had to walk through camel dung. They had to walk through dirty places, and their feet would get dirty. And when a guest would come over to your house, in those days, it was biblical custom for you to take a pan of water and meet them at the door and wash their feet. Lord, have mercy. I hear somebody saying, not mine. I didn't use lotion this morning. You'll get that on the way home. But so the brook, it was custom for them to wash their guest feet. And Jesus said to Simon, you didn't even follow the custom. You broke the rule. But this woman that you call a sinner, she didn't really know how to worship me. She brought something precious to me. She cried behind me. Watch it here now. But watch this. He said, but Simon, he said, since I've been here, you have not given me no kiss. You have not wiped my head with all. But he said, this one, who you call a sinner, has not stopped kissing my feet, has not stopped anointing my head, has not stopped wiping my feet. Since I entered into your house. I wish I had a witness in here. What I'm trying to tell somebody. Is that when God been good to you. You are not wait till you get to your house. You ought to do it right here in Pleasant Green. And you ought to let your enemy know today. That uh, this is my coming out party. Do I have a witness in here? And Jesus looked at the woman and said, Thy sins are forgiven. Wait a minute. Somebody didn't know when to shout. Thy sins are forgiven. Brother Hayden, that's in the present tense. But it's derived from the past tense. He said, not only is your past sins forgiven, but if you slip up along the way, your future sins are forgiven too. Do I have a witness in here? And I'm clothing now, Brother Brooks. I'm clothing now, Sister Wonder. I'm clothing now, Janice. I'll see you later, Brother Lane. When I tell y'all what I was thinking on the way to church this morning. Sister Kelly, when I was growing up in Ronald, Alabama, in a small country town, we had an old gas stove. I wish I had a witness in here. We didn't have a big one, but we had a little old gas stove, Sister Brooks. And every now and then, my mama would take us down to Piggly Wiggly. Somebody don't know when to shout. She'd take us down to the grocery store, and we'd get a little box of Orville Red and box of popcorn. Somebody don't know what that is. Orville Red and box of popcorn came in a aluminum pan. Had a little handle on it. I wish I had a witness in here. You could shake it up and then set it on the stove. Come on, on, when you set it on the stove, when the heat got real good to the popcorn, you hear some noise on the inside. Pop, pop, pop. Do I have a witness in here? And what I did, Brother Brooks, when I heard it got through popping, I take that aluminum lid and pull it back. But what I did not like about it, Pleasant Green, when I got to the bottom of the popcorn, there was some that did not pop. Watch it. That's like church folks. The popcorn had the same amount of heat. It was on the stove the same amount of time. Some popped. But the others didn't pop. Somebody come to church this morning. 
You can feel the Holy Spirit all on the inside of you. But there's somebody around you have not popped yet. Do I have a witness? When God been good to you, I'm going to learn how to pop every now and then. Can I get somebody to wave their hand and say, Lord, I thank you for my journey down here. Lord, The door open. 